The next topic is crime. The first word is accomplice. Accomplice is a countable noun. Now, be careful of the pronunciation. It's not accomplice. It's accomplice. An accomplice is a person who helps somebody else commit a crime or do something wrong. In the picture, you can see a thief with an accomplice. I mean, I don't know exactly if they're thieves, but I think we can assume from the picture that they're probably not doing something legal. The police are positive that the suspect had an accomplice because she couldn't have robbed the store alone. He was an unwilling accomplice in the crime, but he nevertheless went to prison for his involvement. The next word is alibi. It's also a countable noun. And again, be careful of the pronunciation. It's not alibi. It's alibi. An alibi is something that proves that a person was somewhere else when a crime was committed. Here are some collocations. A cast iron alibi. That's an alibi that's very strong. A false alibi. A perfect alibi. A solid alibi. Solid here means strong, a strong alibi, and a weak alibi. He was home alone the night of the attack, which means he doesn't have a strong alibi. The police were forced to let the suspect go because she had a cast iron alibi. To let somebody go means to release somebody. Now we have arson. Arson. It's an uncountable noun. Arson is the crime of intentionally making something burn, setting fire to something, especially a building. In the word family, we have another noun, which is arsonist. An arsonist is a person who commits arson. Two men have been arrested on suspicion of arson. She was jailed for three years for committing arson. Now we have the verb blackmail. Blackmail. To blackmail means to demand money from somebody or to force them to do something by threatening to reveal a secret or to harm them. It's basically saying to someone, if you don't do this for me or give me money, I will do something that you won't like. Let's see the word family. First, we have the noun blackmail. That's the act of blackmailing somebody. And then we have the noun blackmailer. A blackmailer is a person who blackmails somebody. This man is being blackmailed. Here's a usage tip. It is sometimes followed by into. For example, Julie's employee tried to blackmail her into raising his salary. They were sentenced to five years in prison for blackmailing high profile business leaders. A high profile person is somebody who receives a lot of public attention. She blackmailed him into hiring her cousin. Now we have another verb, which is bribe. Bribe. This means to give somebody money or a gift to try to make them do something for you, especially something dishonest or illegal. In the word family, we have a couple of nouns. The first one is also bribe. That's the money or gift that somebody gives or offers somebody to try to persuade them to do something. 
And then we have the noun bribery. That's the concept or the act of taking or receiving bribes. Here's a usage tip. It is often used in one of the following sentence structures. To bribe somebody with something. The kids refuse to do their homework until we bribe them with candy. So it's not always something that's illegal. Then we have to bribe somebody to do something. She bribed the border guard to allow her to pass. And finally, to bribe somebody into doing something. The judge was bribed into giving a very lenient sentence. A local businessman has been sent to prison for trying to bribe local government officials. When they got stopped for speeding, they bribed the police officers to look the other way. Here, to look the other way means to ignore something bad or illegal that is happening. Next, we have the verb bug. Bug. This is a couple of meanings. Number one, to put a small electronic device somewhere to secretly listen to conversations. Number two, informal, to annoy somebody. In the word family, we have the noun bug. That has several meanings. Um, the main meaning is a small insect, but in the context of crime, it means the small device that is used to secretly listen to conversations. The spies bugged the politician's hotel room. She didn't want to use her phone because she thought that someone had bugged it. It bugs me when people try to get on the train before letting people get off. Does that bug you? There, bug means annoy. And now we have burglary. Burglary. This is a countable and uncountable noun. It's the crime of entering a building illegally and stealing things. Let's see the word family. First, we have the verb burgle, which is used in the UK. And then we have the verb burglarize, which is more American. Both of those mean to enter a building illegally and steal things. Then we have the noun burglar. A burglar is a person who does this. So somebody who commits burglary. Police are alarmed because there has been an increase in the number of burglaries in this neighborhood this year. There, it's countable. She was arrested and charged with burglary and is now awaiting trial. There, it's uncountable. Um, if somebody is charged with a crime, they have been formally accused, but they haven't been found guilty or innocent yet. And to await trial means to wait to go to court. Now we have conspirator, conspirator. This is a countable noun. A conspirator is a person who is involved in a secret plan to do something illegal. Let's see the word family. First, we have the verb conspire. That means to secretly plan to do something illegal or harmful with other people. Then we have the noun conspiracy. That's a secret plan by a group of people to do something illegal or harmful. Next, we have the adjective conspiratorial, which means secretive or related to a conspiracy. And then the adverb of that, which is conspiratorially. The criminal's fellow conspirators turned on him and reached a deal with the police. That essentially means that the criminal's accomplices betrayed him to save themselves 
or for special treatment. She was identified as the main conspirator in the robbery. The next word is culprit. Culprit. It's a countable noun. It has a couple of meanings. Number one, a person who has committed a crime or has done something wrong. Number two, a person or thing that causes a particular problem or difficulty. Here's a little usage tip. It is often preceded by the. Police still haven't found the culprits behind the attack. Behind here means responsible for. The police are hoping for information from the public to help them find the culprits. If you have mold in your home, humidity may be the culprit. And now we have embezzle. Embezzle. This is a verb and it means to steal money that you are responsible for or that belongs to an organization or person that you work for. In the word family, we have a couple of nouns. First, we have embezzlement. That's the act of doing this. And then embezzler. An embezzler is a person who embezzles money. The bankers were accused of embezzling a total of $20 million. It was later discovered that the mayor had embezzled $3.5 million in public funds. And now, fingerprint. Fingerprint. This is a countable noun. It means the curved lines on the end of a person's finger, or the mark made by them, which are unique to that individual. In other words, everybody's fingerprints are different. They are often used by police to discover who committed a crime. The verb is also fingerprint. To fingerprint somebody means to make a record of somebody's fingerprints. In the past, this was usually done with ink and paper, but now little machines are usually used. Is a usage tip. Do not confuse this with footprint or paw print. A footprint is a mark or indent that a person's foot leaves on a surface. And a paw print is a mark or indent that an animal's paw leaves. Um, in the pictures there, you can see a footprint in sand and some paw prints on rock. Her fingerprints were all over the crime scene. A crime scene is where a crime takes place. The police questioned several suspects and took their fingerprints. Now we have forensics. Forensics. This is an uncountable and plural noun. It has a couple of meanings. Number one, the branch of science that uses scientific methods to help solve crimes. It's also referred to as forensic science. Number two, scientific tests that are used to help solve crimes. The adjective is forensic. That means related to forensics. The adverb of that is forensically. Here's a usage tip. When it refers to the branch of science, so when it is uncountable, it is used with a singular verb. For example, forensics is an area of science that has been instrumental in countless criminal investigations. Jake is currently doing a science degree and he would like to major in forensics. The police think they know who the culprit is, but forensics are still being carried out. So their forensics means scientific tests. And now we have forgery. Forgery. This is a countable and uncountable noun. When it's countable, it means an illegal copy of something such as a painting, 
document or piece of paper money. When it's uncountable, it means the crime of copying these types of things. In the word family, we have the verb forge, and that means to make an illegal copy of a painting, document, etc. And then we have the noun forger. A forger is a person who makes forgeries. Immigration officials realized that her passport was a forgery. Frank Abagnale, who inspired the movie Catch Me If You Can, was charged with forgery, amongst other crimes. And now fraud. Fraud. This is a countable and uncountable noun. It has a couple of meanings. Number one. The crime of deceiving people in order to obtain money or goods or to win an election. Number two, a person who is not what they claim or pretend to be. Let's see the word family. First, we have the verb defraud. That means to deceive somebody illegally in order to get money. Then we have the adjective fraudulent, and that means intended to deceive somebody, usually to get money illegally. Uh, The adverb of that is fraudulently. And then we have the noun fraudster. That's a person who commits fraud, but it's mainly used in British English. Internet fraud is now very common. Here are some collocations. We have credit card fraud, Electoral fraud, insurance fraud, internet fraud, online fraud, and tax fraud. The corrupt businessman was finally sent to prison for tax fraud. She was found to be involved in a $20 million fraud. The man claimed to be a wealthy aristocrat but he turned out to be a complete fraud. If you don't know the word aristocrat, it's someone who belongs to a high social class. They're people like dukes and barons. Next we have getaway. Getaway. It's a countable noun. A getaway is an occasion when a person escapes from a place or a situation, usually after committing a crime. In the word family, we have the phrasal verb, get away. And that means to leave or escape a place. He is trying to make a getaway. Here are some collocations. To make a getaway. And then we have a getaway car, a getaway van, and a getaway vehicle. Those are things that you might use to um, get away from something. She dashed into the getaway car after robbing the bank. Frank tried to make a swift getaway after he stole my wine, but I was too fast for him. Uh, If you don't know the word swift, it's another word for fast. The next word is handcuffs. Handcuffs. This is a plural noun. Handcuffs are a pair of metal or plastic rings joined by a short chain that are used to hold a prisoner's wrists together. Um, These are your wrists. The verb is also handcuff, and that means to put handcuffs on somebody. Here's a usage tip. It is sometimes shortened to cuffs, but that's informal. For example, the police put cuffs on him quick smart. Quick smart means very quickly or immediately. The suspect tried to make a getaway, but she couldn't run very fast because she was wearing handcuffs. The prisoner was taken away in handcuffs. 
Now we have the verb hijack. Hijack. It has a couple of meanings. Number one, to take control of a plane, vehicle, or ship using violence or threats. Number two, to take control of something, especially a group, meeting, or conversation, to use it for your own aims or interests. Let's see the word family. First, we have the noun hijacking. That's the act of doing this. And then we have another noun, which is hijacker. That's a person who hijacks something. The truck was hijacked by a group of armed men. Emily completely hijacked the meeting and tried to shift the focus to her own project. Now we have hostage. Hostage. This is a countable noun. A hostage is somebody who is taken as a prisoner by a person or group in order to make other people accept their demands. The demands are often financial or political. Here are some collocations. We have a hostage crisis, hostage negotiations, a hostage taker, that's a person or group who takes a hostage or hostages. Then we have to take a hostage, to take somebody as a hostage, or simply to take somebody hostage, to keep or hold a hostage, to keep or hold somebody as a hostage, and then to release a hostage. The bank robbers took four people hostage during the robbery. After lengthy negotiations, the extremists agreed to release the hostages. An extremist is a person with extreme political beliefs or objectives. The next word is intruder. Intruder. This is a countable noun. It has a couple of meanings. Number one, a person who enters a building or area illegally, usually to steal something. Number two, a person who is in a place or situation where they are not wanted. Let's see the word family. First, we have the verb intrude. That means to go or be somewhere where you're not wanted or not supposed to be. Then we have intrusion. That means the act of intruding. And then we have the adjective intrusive. That means affecting somebody's private life or interrupting them in a way that is not wanted. They thought an intruder was in their living room and they were very relieved to discover that it was just their dog. He didn't enjoy the family gathering because he felt like an intruder. The next word is piracy. Piracy. This is an uncountable noun and it has a couple of meanings. Number one, the crime of attacking a ship at sea in order to steal from it. Number two, the crime of illegally copying books movies, music, computer programs, etc. In the word family, we have the verb pirate. That means to commit piracy. And then we have the noun pirate. That's a person who commits piracy. Uh, in the picture there, you can see the Jolly Roger. That's the traditional flag flown by pirates with a skull and crossbones. And now some collocations. Internet or online piracy. Movie piracy. Music piracy. Software piracy. And then to combat piracy. And to crack down on piracy. If you crack down on something, you try harder to stop, um, to stop it from happening. 
It's something bad or illegal. Many countries are currently trying to crack down on piracy in the northwestern part of the Indian Ocean. Music piracy is a major problem for record labels. Now we have poach. Poach. This verb has a few meanings. Um, it's actually a word that's commonly used in cooking, but here we're going to look at the other meanings. Number one, to illegally catch or shoot animals on private land or without permission. Number two, to take something or somebody from something or somebody else in a secretive or dishonest way. Let's see the word family. First we have the noun poaching, which is the act. And then we have the noun poacher. And that's a person who poaches. Many people in the area would go to the landowner's private stream to poach trout. A stream is a very small river. And trout are a type of fish. The journalist was accused of poaching ideas from her colleague. The startup poached several of the larger company's employees. The next word is ransom. Ransom. It's a countable and uncountable noun. It's a large amount of money that is demanded in exchange for releasing somebody who is being held captive. To hold somebody captive essentially means to keep somebody prisoner, either illegally or in a war. The verb is also ransom. And that means to pay money so that a person who is being held captive can be released. Now some collocations. We have ransom money, a ransom demand, a ransom note, and then to hold somebody for ransom. That means to keep somebody prisoner until money is paid. And finally, to pay a or the ransom. The kidnappers wanted a ransom of $2 million to return the millionaire's son. The group was demanding a hefty ransom to release the hostages. Hefty in this context means very large. And now we have scam. Scam. This is a countable noun. It means a clever but dishonest and illegal plan for making money. The verb is also scam. And that means to trick somebody into giving you money. Another noun is scammer, and that's a person who scams people. Internet scams are becoming more and more common. The people thought they were investing in a cryptocurrency, but it turned out to be a scam. Online romance scams are now sadly common occurrences. A romance or dating scam is when someone pretends to be somebody else, starts an online relationship with a person, and then tricks that person into sending the money. And finally, we have the verb smuggle. Smuggle. This means to take or send a thing or a person secretly and illegally into or out of a place, especially a country. It's usually when some sort of legal border is being crossed. Let's see the word family. First we have the noun smuggling, and that's the act. And then the noun smuggler. A smuggler is a person who smuggles something or someone. A few collocations. To smuggle cigarettes to smuggle diamonds, to smuggle drugs, to smuggle people, and to smuggle weapons. 
She smuggled the drugs across the border by hiding them in the lining of her suitcase. The lining of something is a piece of material that covers the inside of something. They went to prison for helping to smuggle illegal immigrants into the country. Recently, I met a woman named Sharon, who used to be a police detective. Sharon had some fascinating stories to tell. She told me about some people who went to prison for insurance fraud after they burned their own businesses down in an attempt to make large insurance claims. The investigators were able to use forensics to determine who the culprits were and that the business owners had indeed committed arson. It didn't help that they usually had weak alibis. In other words, they couldn't prove that they were somewhere else when the fires happened. I was rather impressed by the range of crimes Sharon had been involved with. She once even arrested a woman and her accomplice after they'd gotten caught poaching. They were trying to take endangered animals from a wildlife sanctuary and then smuggle them out of the country. Once her team caught a group of criminals who were producing counterfeit money. They bugged their phones and cars and were able to arrest the main guy in charge as well as a couple of his conspirators. They ended up serving time in prison for forgery. She had also dealt with some financial crime. For example, there was a woman who was running a text message scam, which involved sending text messages to people saying that their Netflix subscriptions hadn't been processed and that they needed to pay again by clicking on the link in the message. Believe it or not, she ended up making thousands of dollars. Then there was the business manager who was not only embezzling millions of dollars a year from his company, but was also bribing government officials to give his company lucrative contracts. Somehow he thought he'd never get caught. And there was the woman who tried to blackmail her boss into paying her large bonuses by threatening to reveal secrets about him to the media. Some stories were actually rather funny. For example, she told me about a guy who got arrested for burglary. He broke into a house while the people were home, and they quickly called the police when they realized that they had an intruder. Because they weren't sure if he was armed, they stayed quiet and hid in the cellar. He didn't stay very long in any case. He took their wallets from the front hall, and then he picked up their dog, because he was planning on taking it as a hostage and holding it for ransom. But he didn't actually have a getaway car. He'd come on foot. He'd already left the house by the time the police got there, but it didn't take them long to find him, because he was the only man wandering around the neighbourhood holding a barking miniature poodle. Needless to say they were soon taking his fingerprints at the police station. Another not-so-smart criminal was a girl who got arrested for piracy after she tried to sell DVDs of Netflix series and movies on eBay. Sharon also told me about a couple who tried to hijack a truck that was full of gasoline, which they thought they would be able to sell. One of them stepped out in the middle of the road and managed to make the driver stop the truck. They then pulled him out of the truck and put handcuffs on him. They then explained that they wanted him to drive the truck to a different destination because neither of the hijackers knew how to drive a truck that large. They then got the driver back in the driver's seat, but it turned out that it was impossible to drive a truck with handcuffs on, and neither of them could find the key to take the handcuffs off him. 